Hey, today we're continuing our series in worship talking about Psalm 121. Before we even begin, I just want to read Psalm 121 to you. It says this, I look up to the mountains. Does my help come from there? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let you stumble. The one who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel never slumbers or sleeps. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon at night. The Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go both now and forever. I want to start with the first section of this psalm. It says, I look up to the mountains. Does my help come from there? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. This always confused me. Why would a guy look at the mountains and think that that's where his help was coming from? Well, what I learned in doing some research is that he was actually looking at the mountains of Jerusalem and Jerusalem was where the presence of the Lord in that time would have been held. The temple, the tabernacle, whatever you want to call it is what held the, the presence of the Lord. And so the, the author of the psalm is saying, do I look to Jerusalem to be my help, the representative of the presence of God? But what he, he says is that his help actually comes from the Lord, not the representative of, of the Lord, but the actual Lord, the creator of all things. He also acknowledges that, the, that God has the ultimate power to create and, and to, to build. And I love this. He's acknowledging the authority that God has. He is not even, he's bigger than the mountains. He's bigger than Jerusalem. And he also created both of those things. And so he has authority over all things. And in the same way, when Jesus was resurrected, he gave us the advocate. And it says in Romans that the same spirit that, that raised Christ from the dead lives in you now. And so in the same way, we have the, the ever-present help, the Holy Spirit within us that, that holds the power to resurrect things from the dead. And that's very encouraging. Another part of the verse, it continues and says, He will not let you stumble. Now, stumbling indicates that you're moving in progress, that you're walking forward. I don't think it's really possible to stumble without moving forward. I mean, there are some people who maybe if they have an inner ear problem or, you know, something, they might stumble by standing still. But most people, you only stumble if you're moving forward. And I believe that our God is a God who wants progress from his people. Paul attributes a relationship with Christ to a race that he's run well. And so he's, God's saying, in your journey is along your path. Like, I'm not going to let you stumble. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep watch over you. It continues and says, The one who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel never slumbers or sleeps. The Lord watches over you. He's watching over us day and night. There's a couple of things we want to look at this uh, as we look at it. It's interesting because this is similar to a watch post over a city. The person... Uh, is personifying God as a watch post over the city, but one who is a good watch post who never slumbers or sleeps. And it's interesting because if you were a watch post and you were sleeping, you were doing your job very poorly because you weren't keeping, uh, you weren't protecting the city. You were, you were literally leaving the city vulnerable or that area of the wall vulnerable. And so what they're saying is, we have a great watch post, a guard who is, who is on our side. He won't let you stumble and he will not sleep. It's interesting because Elijah, when he's f having a battle with the prophets of Baal, the 450 prophets, he was the last prophet of God, but there are 450 prophets of, of Baal in Israel. When he was facing them, one of his taunts was, has your God fallen asleep? Why isn't he answering your call? Has he fallen asleep? Is he relieving himself in the washroom? Like, what is he doing? And that, that kind of, that taunt was, is he falling asleep? Because he wasn't responding to the call. But what the psalmist is saying is, our God will never sleep or slumber. And so he's not going to be like the, prof, the, the, the God Baal. He's, he's, he's really going to be a guy who will respond at all times. It's interesting, the psalmist also uses the phrasing, he's watching over Israel. Now, Israel, we understand to be a nation, but in Deuteronomy, it's, it's, said, it's stated that uh, Israel was God's chosen nation. His, like, and in Peter, it says, in 1 Peter, actually, it's that they, Israel was a, a, a holy nation, a royal priesthood. Now, for us as Christians, most of us in, uh, in North America aren't of Jewish descent. We're not... Israelites. And that's okay because when Jesus died on the cross, 
and the veil was torn and amazing things happened as he was resurrected, he actually grafted Jews and Gentiles alike into his family. And so we became Israel. We became a part of this family. We became God's chosen people. So instead of reading this psalm like, he who watches over Israel never slumbers or sleeps, I encourage you to put your name in there instead. Instead of Israel, you read, he who watches over Ben never slumbers or sleeps. He who watches over John never slumbers or sleeps. He who watches over Annie never slumbers or sleeps. He who watches over Charlie never slumbers or sleeps. So it's this idea of that God is watching over his chosen people. And, and it's interesting because he didn't choose you because he, you did amazing things. He chose you because he loves you. It's interesting, I have confidence when Annie's watching over Charlie that I can do whatever I want. And Annie reminded me that she watches over Charlie more than I do. And so it's funny, I have the confidence to come to work and, and feel okay because I know that my wife is at home with my, with my daughter. And in the same way, when I get to take care of Charlie, I know that I can release Annie to, to paint, to, to sew, to do whatever she needs to do freely. And, and it's... It's just a, we have this assured confidence that somebody is watching over our daughter. And in the same way, I can move freely in my life when I have an assured confidence that the Lord is watching over me. I can, I can walk in progress in my relationship with Christ knowing that He will be watching over me and holding me up so that I don't stumble. Uh, The psalm continues and says, The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon at night. Now this one, oh, there's always a piece of a psalm that just kind of throws me for a loop. I'm like, what the heck are you talking about? Like, why are you talking about the moon and the sun? That makes no sense. But if we have a cultural understanding of what the, the moon and the sun kind of represented, it, it, it makes more sense because this was written in the Middle East where the sun would have actually been dangerous. If you went on a journey, you, you could die because of how hot it was. And so when, when it says that God is throwing shade, not actually throwing shade like that, but when he's throwing shade your way, protecting you, when it says that, it's saying he's protecting you from the very hot sun. It's protecting you from something that might kill you. And so in, in Middle Eastern culture, they would have understood, oh yeah, the sun's super hot. But in Calgary, they, like, we'd be like, oh, the sun, that, it's always sunny here and that's so pleasant. I love being in the sun. Or if like I was in Vancouver, like when I, where I grew up, it was like the sun, the thing that we never see because it's constantly gray. Like I would love to see the sun. Don't throw shade my way, you know? Um, But to have that cultural understanding is so important so that we can interpret the psalm properly. It's interesting because the moon is something that I'm like, okay, well, that makes absolutely no sense. But it makes sense in in the day and age that they were living in because the moon had superstitious like connotations towards it. Like there's, I read some some books on this stuff, and it was like, if if the moon did this thing, your cattle were dead. Like if the moon did this other thing, like you were gonna get pregnant with a, a firstborn child. Like it was crazy. Like the moon like literally dictated everything in that culture and. I, I, I really do believe that that was just interpretation of what, the, what was happening, but, but that was the context that they were living in. So when we understand the cultural context, the sun and the moon actually kind of seem a little more dangerous. And, and God wants to protect us from the sun and him providing shade makes more sense because he's protecting us on our long journey. See, what I love about God is he addresses your needs. He doesn't address the needs of, uh, like he doesn't put, copy and paste people's needs onto you, he addresses your needs. And so know that if, if you live in a city where the sun <laughs> doesn't shine, maybe instead of shade, he'll, he'll send some shine, sunshine your way. Um, the psalm continues and says, the Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go both now and forever. Now, this is reminiscent of Psalm 23 when it talks about walking through the, the, the valley of the shadow of death. Like, it, it, it's, it's interesting because when we hear keeps you from all harm or, or like protects us, we assume that no danger is going to come our way. But what God is saying is, is not that no danger is going to come our way, but when danger comes... He will be up beside us. When danger happens, when when circumstances go wrong, like He is going to be beside us. So He's not promising us a perfect life. What He's promising us is to be on guard, watching, well-equipped, equipping equipping the Christians to to combat the, the things that come against them. And so 
he's, he is keeping you from all harm, but he's not promising a perfect life. And it says, as you come and go, and I really do believe that this is just saying, like it says at the end, both now and forever, it's like, wherever you go, whenever it may be, I will always be with you. It doesn't matter where you are, it doesn't matter when you are, I will be with you. Because our God is so faithful. And it's interesting because there, if you look at this psalm closely, the words watch over are used six times. And this is really the main emphasis of this psalm is that God is going to keep watch over you and protect you when harm comes your way. And so know that you have a, a guard, a watch post who is always alert, who is always ready to come through for you. And he is always faithful. So let me conclude by just reading the psalm again over you. It says this, I look up to the mountains. Does my help come from there? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let you slumber. The one who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel never slumbers or sleeps. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon at night. The Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go, both now and forever. So Jesus, I just pray that we would know that you are with us. God, I pray that that, that knowledge of you being by our side would give us confidence to move forward in a relationship with you move, and move confidently in the things that you're calling us to. Lord, we love you and we're so thankful for you and pray this in your precious name. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next week.